Did you realize that taking these two medications right here together can actually, for a transplant patient, potentially be <gasps> deadly? Hey folks, welcome back to the Transplant Over Again today. My name is Jim Merle, and yes, we're talking about medication management again here on the program. But today we're specifically reminding ourselves about the potential dangers that could be involved between drug interactions when you're already on a list or a battery of medications, I sometimes call it a buttload of medications. I'm not sure if that's the best term for that. But when you're taking a lot of medications post-transplant, you got to be very, 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 need I say very, cautious about the types of medications that you're putting in your body. Particularly if it's an over-the-counter medication or if it, heaven forbid, is something that you kind of self-prescribed. You need to be careful about that. And my rule of thumb, or I should say my rule of thumbs, I put both of them in this, is to always, always, always check with your team first before beginning any type of medication. I don't care if it's another prescription from another doctor. I don't care if it's something that you've discovered on the internet, which that'd probably be the worst case, or something that you're getting over the counter. I don't care if it's a supplement or, you know, an herb or whatever. Just sit down and discuss this with your team. Put in the phone call. That's not the representative of the phone anymore. Phones look differently. Put in your phone call and get a hold of your team and ask them to check the interactions. Ask them what they suggest. So even something as, as simple as a, a little headache or something like that or a common cold, when you might be tempted to reach to that medicine cabinet, reach off that shelf and grab something like an ibuprofen, that within itself needs to be checked out before you consider taking those things. That's the universal principle. Always, always, always check with your team before taking any type of medication. With that being said, one of the interactions is pretty common that I was told, at least, maybe I was lied to, I don't know, but I was told in the very beginning is that, Jim, since you are on ProGraph, never, ever, ever take any form of ibuprofen. And that includes the pill I held up while ago which happens to be an Advil. They told me not to even take Advil because the ibuprofen, that's what it is. Don't take that along with your Prograf or AKA Tacrolimus because it could be potentially dangerous. And I just took that at face value. I went on marching about my life and accepted that until I had a number of people that commented on the video I did not too long ago about the medications I take. And they said, hey, Jim, it's fine. You, they're lying to you. You can take ibuprofen or Advil or pretty much anything else when you're taking that list of medications or, or someone else added to that discussion or that comment. You know, I'm the same way. They never told me anything about not taking ibuprofen. So I don't see a problem. Or someone said underneath that comment, I've never had any problem and I take it all the time. Well, it may be the case. And, and if you take the medications all the time and you don't seem to have any problem, maybe good for you. Big whoop. I don't, I don't want to say about that. I didn't mean to be that harsh, but, you know, I'm glad. I'm proud and happy that you're having good success. But is there any interaction that really exists? Again, my team said there was, but I've just never really checked that out. So we're going to go today to the WebMD app. Now, my disclaimer up front, listen closely. I'm not telling you the WebMD app is any form of substitution for your medical advice. Again, call your team first. But if you're just curious, like I am today, the WebMD app that you can down phone on, download on your phone, your tablet, whatever, down phone, that's what I made up that word. <laughs> anyway, that, that app that you can download can be pretty handy. Number one, I use it most often as a pill identifier, and that is you can put in the size, the color, the shape, the little uh, coding or the numbers that are on it. It can identify a pill. I do that anytime I get a new prescription. It doesn't look just like it always has. I like to check those bottles and those labels against what actually is said about that pill. I use it for that. But there's also a feature in here, which I'll show you uh, about right now, that's, that's at least present. I don't know how long it's been here, but that is actually a drug, inter drug, I can't talk today. That is a drug interactions tab. It's about a third of the way down on my right. And so we're going to go ahead and click on that right now. And we're going to, I'm going to show you, I hopefully can show you how you can check these meds and kind of get an idea as to what's going on with them. So I'm going to click, click, click here. Ooh, I really can't talk on the drug interactions tab. And you can see the WebMD app within itself looks pretty nice. But once you click on the drug interactions, man, it's desert city. There's nothing here. But there is a plus button up in the top right hand corner. You can go and hit and it pretty much has every drug ever created, I guess, in here. But I'm going to put in to begin with that Prograf Tecrolimus that I take. So I'm going to say P-R-O-G. And there it is about third one down. I'm going to add that one. 
And then I'm going to add in the Advil, a.k.a. the ibuprofen. I've always been told never, never, never to take. Let's look for that, A-D-B-I. And there it is at the top. Now, as soon as I do that, it says there are some interactions that are found. So I'm going to click on that. And it says plainly right here, there's a, quote, serious interaction and I should choose an alternative. It goes on to explain that these Advil liquid gels, uh, they increase the toxicity of this other medication in this case. So what does that potentially mean? Well, what that potentially means is, is that if I take these two medications together, just out of my own choice, there's the potential that this medication, the more important one, uh, could become toxic. That is, that it could either increase or decrease the um the validity that's not the right word but the uh anyway it could mess your levels up i'll we'll put it like that that's in jim world plain speech i'm definitely not a medical doctor talk but it could it could mess your levels up if you're like i am you've been floating along for decade almost a decade now without having my medication change without having any issue or any problem with my medications my prograph level being constant consistent if i decide to start taking advil out of the blue and I take that a couple number of times, it may cause that level to go really high or really low. And then where am I at? I'm facing potential rejection and huge problems. So that's why my team, I suppose, said don't take these two together. But again, how do we answer the people who said, no, my team never said anything about that? Well, there are a few potential answers to that. One, it may be a simple oversight. I don't know. I'm not accusing them of anything, but it could have just been an oversight in that they just didn't get around to telling you that or they didn't realize that you need to know that. I've dealt with that a lot of times. I've been in the ER, even the ER over at UAB where I was transplanted and they tried to give me ibuprofen for pain. And I've had to say, whoa, hold up. Wait a minute. I can't take that. I'm not allowed to take that. It could be an oversight, but it could also be the case that you're taking something just slightly different. For example, again, to go back to the screen and kind of look at it, we see here on the screen that Advil with ProGraph said it is a, quote, serious interaction, find an alternative. If I were to go back and take off the ProGraph, for example, which some don't take ProGraph, not all of us take ProGraph, and I were to change that to another medication, say, for example, like MyFortic, that's another option that's available to us. It says there are some interactions, but so let's see what they are. Now, in this case, it says monitor closely. So it's not a serious interaction. It's just one that needs to be monitored closely. You read the explanation. It says these liquid gels will sometimes increase the level of effect of my 40. So again, a similar danger there to get things out of whack and off kilter, but it's considered just a monitor closely medication. Now, if you go into another medication that's pretty common, and we'll take off the my 40 in this case, and you go in, like many of us, if we don't take tacrolimus, many take ceremus, and so I'm going to punch that in, punch in that medication, it says there's no interactions found, okay? So that could be the very well be the difference. It could be that your team hasn't given you this tremendous severe warning because you just take something different. Maybe you don't take ProGraph. Maybe you take a different form, like ceremus, like myfortic, like microphenolic acid. There are a number of other uh, potentials there that you might take where there may not be the same interaction. There may not be the danger that is involved. But nonetheless, I really do think that the WebMD app as a whole can be extremely useful and particularly using, like I pointed out, the, the, the pill identifier tab right there or maybe the drug interaction tab right here. And by the way, this app does not limit you like some do. Some of them give an app a number limit, you could go ahead and punch in pretty much any medication that you take across the board. I'll punch in, for example, if I can find it, I take calcium. Let me see. I'm going to just do general calcium right here. I could add that to the list. I do happen to take, I don't take Advil, so let me take that off. I do happen to take, not Serenus, but I take Prograph. So let's do that one. We had that one up on the screen a moment ago anyway, and I do take my 40, by the way. So my 4 dick on that, and it comes up and says there are potential interactions. So I'm worried about that, but I go in and check it out, and it gives the specifics. And what it tells me here is basically calcium's no problem, but my 40 and a prograph, are, there is a potential there of a problem, but the explanation it gives, even though it claims to be serious, is that both myfortic and prograph are both increase immune system suppression, see? So my team happens to be using those two drugs 
together as a cocktail to get me in the right spot. So I have permission to take that. So what I'm saying is basically this, that even though you might use an app like this, and it may be very handy, please, please, please do not make this your main source of uh, information. That would be a terrible idea. Uh, it'd be very, very important, however, in this case, to check with your team about everything. But if you're going to use an app, just kind of get an idea, kind of get a baseline. I think this is a pretty good tool to be able to use and can definitely give you some explanation, if nothing else. And it may cut down on some arguments, too. Again, <laughs> yeah, I've had people argue and say, oh, I can take all the ibuprofen I want. Others say, no, 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 it's a dead no. He, he, Jim knows what he's talking about. Well, I don't know what I'm talking about. But uh, there are some interactions. So always be safe, be cautious. Check with your team. And uh, yeah, that was a long video to make this short explanation. But I recommend the WebMD app and others like it. Medscape is another one uh, that you can get to get in. And it'll give you a lot of good information about your health. And in this case, your medications and potential interactions for them. Thank you so much for joining me today. And until next time, stay stronger, friends.